Hi there, and welcome back to the Amazing Collection Unboxing. We are on box number 99, moving on down the line. This week, due to popular request, I chose a box that says Model, Catalogs, and Miscellaneous. And it is heavy, so I'm sure that there are lots of catalogs and paperwork in here. Yep, we got a box of paperwork. So, on top, we have the lovely Reeves International padded envelope that indicates it has Briar Fest stuff in it. I have lots of these sitting in my boxes too, so I shouldn't say anything, right? So we have um, the buttons that used to come, I think we're doing um, armbands now, but this is Nobel 2 from 2004, RSV Inviolatable from 2002, I'm a Briar fan, a couple of Briar magnets, I always like to pick those up at the free booth. And then Briar Fest 2002 dinner buffet. Remember the days when we had Kentucky Burgoo for dinner? And then the model tickets, the Fiesta dinner. These are, they're fun, but really, I mean, I have lots of these. What do you do with them? You put them in boxes. We have the Briar Fest 1998 special reissue bolo tie sculpted by Rob Scriver, Scriver, something like that. Oh, it says on the back, Buffalo Skull Bolo Tie, sculpted by Bob Scriver, limited edition, super special. We have some lovely fabric with buffaloes and pine trees on it, as you do. We have a Briarfest um, catalog. These are fun. They have, oh, this one has some Briar facts. Last year's auction raised over $40,000 for charity. Rejoice is the first horse to grace a new mold for the Briarfest model. They've started doing that a couple times since then. Um, we have a glossy gray dapple Clydesdale reference photo. Would have been nice to have had that with the horse. We have lots of little, um, these are the collector catalogs that come in the boxes with the horses for Briar. I'm, I have lots of these myself and I need to probably just recycle them. Um, Briar, Just About Horses, Just About Horses magazine. They don't have a lot of information in them that we don't already have. And there are lots of them out there. Then we have bunches of Triple B model sales lists. 98, 99, 2000, 2002. I keep these two probably need to go through them and scan if there's something of particular interest in there, a special run or a bit of information. But really, um, particularly from the 90s and 2000s, I don't think that these, I'm going to probably not keep mine anymore. So I say now, we'll see what I do with that. We have a couple of the little tickets that go with the models for Jamboree. This is for Enduring Freedom and Debonair. That's the problem with keeping paperwork. How do you, obviously I wanna keep these because I have the models, but then how do you keep it somewhere that you can easily find it and not in a giant box of other stuff if you wanna sell the model or take it to a show? This shows that the model was number 58. That would have been good when I was going to sell it or show it. Um, one of those enduring problems with collecting. What do you do with all the other stuff that comes with the models. We have a Just About Horses from back in the day. This was July, August, 2002. I do keep these. Um, I need to figure out a way to keep them more uh, easily accessible because again, there's information in there that just isn't out on the internet. So um, those are good to keep. A Bridie of the Grand Canyon book. Uh, we saw several Bridie models through the collection. I haven't found one of the boxes that came, this book came with um, by Marguerite Henry, illustrated by Wesley Dennis, but still a nice book. Um, lots of catalogs. These are all Briar dealer catalogs, 2002. These, these are helpful. And then we have one um, color photocopy. These I do like to keep because they will frequently have information in them, again, that's not available elsewhere. Something about the sculpting or the history or the design of the product. But again, they're big and bulky and hard to store, hard to access. Haven't quite decided what to do with mine yet. 
Um, and then a color photocopy. Why? Um, I don't know. I can see doing color photocopies of some of the older, more difficult to find stuff. Not so sure about the new stuff. Now, Peter Stone catalogs, I do like to keep. Again, because it's just harder to find information on Peter Stone horses on the internet. There's the reference page, but it's extremely difficult to find exactly what you're looking for. Um, so I, I do keep these, but again, I keep them so that I can reference them, but then I don't keep them places that I can put my hands on them easily. So kind of um, a double-edged sword there. Now these, I've kept them all for the same reason that I've just said. This is the Jamboree Bulletin from January 1997. Tons of information in here, a couple more collector catalogs, but um, then we have a Briar Model Horse Collectors Jamboree show program. Back in those days, um, all kinds of stuff, test runs, limited runs, signed stuff got donated. And there's really no other place that that information resides other than in these catalogs. Um, Briar donated test runs. Some of the co some of the companies that came and went out of business quickly, like um, Best Talking Horses, um, those China Horse 2000s, they'll have information in here that there's just not any place else that it exists. So again, I keep these. I should probably scan them so that I can get the information more easily. Um, because how long has this box been sitting unopened? Now we've got some good stuff. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, this is my most wanted holy grail. This is from the catalog Horse of Course, May 1980, Spring Buyer's Guide, for sale, a piece, in quotation marks, of Emperor's Gold Bar. Emperor's Gold Bar was um, a live horse that Briar made a special run stable mate of on the stable mate Arabian Stallion. And then in a little piece of plastic, they put a little piece of horse hockey. Yes, us horse model horse collectors will collect anything. And I actually have a collection of model horse poop. Um, but super rare, super awesome to have that piece of information. And then my second holy grail. This is from November 1971, Western Horseman. The original ad for the Briar um, presentation horses. So those are both super awesome. I don't think I have that information. So Briar Fest 2002, Briar Fest um, benefit auction information, Briar Fest 2001, all good stuff, but sitting in a box. Now we have some uh, catalogs or uh, end manila envelopes. Ooh, oh my gosh, this is awesome. Now this is where color photocopies or photocopies of any kind, um, I forget what they call the ones that are like in the brown tones, the sepia ones. This is the Briar Animal Creations price list and Briar Animal Creations price list. Well, John, I remembered after all, here's copies of the old materials I have with the elephant and how to. Note on my copy of this 58 catalog, the inner pages were copied at 50%. Um, this is awesome. These are the original 1950s catalogs. Not only does it help us date things, um, it helps us see when things and products change. I love like the logo changes, the fonts that they used were just wonderful. It helps us, the Briar Molding Company logo, the script that they used, helps us date things, helps us get clues as to when things back from when there was no records kept occurred. So these are super awesome. These I would totally keep. There's a picture of the um, donkey with howda or with baskets and the elephant with howda. Um, size, packing, weight, list price, $18 a dozen. I'd pay that for an elephant with howda, wouldn't you? Um, these, these are awesome. And these even copies still give you a ton of information as a collector. Hopefully this is more fun stuff. Looks like it's from the same person. Oh, which would be awesome, double awesome. This is from Nancy Young, the 
wonderful Briar historian that helped us um, learn so much back in the day. We have the animal creations again, donkey. So this is more copies of that original. Oh, here's the price list from January 1st, 1958. This is all super awesome information to have. Um, I collect old stuff, the old original Briar stuff, and these pieces of information are super helpful on helping me identify when stuff was created, when it was changed, how to date things back in the day. Then we have a couple of Briar um, coloring books. I have these, I believe the entire thing, at least much of it, was designed by Cheryl Leisure, who is a wonderful artist. So. I have a couple of copies of these, some to play with and some to keep. Ah, of course, in our Briar collection, what else would we need but a TV guide? Lawrence Welk's Champagne Musician, so that you can watch Lawrence Welk as you play with your model horses. Local programmings, there must be some interesting information in here. I don't know if it's Briar, but there's a really awesome Auto Dynamics, it's wonderful, says Lawrence Welk. The Swept-Wing 57 Dodge. I'd keep it just for that. That's awesome. Oh, Circus Boy and the Flying Fernandos. This collector loved him some Circus Boy. Loved him some Circus Boy. Had a really creepy crown, <laughs> clown with Circus Boy. And then super cute, I hope you can see it at Circus Boy with two miniature horses. Um, these are all original comic books. He was a very popular character back then. Um, and that's how we got a lot of our Briar animal creation stuff. Lassie, Rin Tin Tin, Circus Boy, um, Fury, all of those. This is cool. This is the Circus Boy theme song from the TV show on a record. An old, luckily it doesn't have the big circle in the middle. So if you still had a record player, you could play this. I don't, but I'm sure that there is something out there on the internet. And the Circus Boy coloring book. Really good condition, nicely and uncolored, except the front page. Um, model trading post. I'm kind of torn about this. Um, the older ones, again, go through them and see if there's information on special runs, but probably other than making you cry, a class act, the Five Gator and Palomino Pinto was only $24. That's about what he costs now. But a lot of these prices are no longer um, quite that inexpensive. So now we have some really cool old Briar catalogs. So we have 1984 and 83. These big dealers catalogs, I do collect and I do have all of them. They have a ton of information in them. Um, about design, original packaging, things that we've forgotten about, like the Briar Pony book, My Welsh Ponies, cut and color. Um, a lot of the old stuff, Kelly Reno and Little Man, the Briar Miniatures collection with the Rigsickers flocked animals. Um, these are super, oh my gosh. And then a picture of um, Rich Rudish. Make sure I, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Testing, Rich Rudish sculpting Sham, the Godolphin Arabian. Um, and what's really fun about this is there's a picture of Sham and a little cat. The cat is Grimalkin, who is Sham's friend in the book. They were originally going to release this as a set. It was gonna be Sham with Grimalkin. I forget the story about why he wasn't issued. Um, but you ain't going to find a picture of that cat anywhere but this 1984 dealer catalog. <laughs> now this one, uh, the, the mid-year catalogs are harder to come by than the straight-up dealer catalogs. This one was super hard to come by, and I remember I bought my copy out of somebody's trunk at Briarfest when we were all waiting in line to get in the horse park. There was people with their trunks popped in the parking lot, and we would just shop in the parking lot out of people's cars and trunks. And that's where I got my copy of the 1996 Reeves International Mid-Year Introduction catalog. Um, they had a whole catalog for Dapples. They were really pushing this line when it came out, all of the briar horses with the manes and tails. Um, they got their own 10-page full-color deal catalog. 
they thought these were going to be pretty hot. Um, not so much amongst us collectors, but they're probably still popular among the kids. 86 and 87. Um, we got lots of catalogs. Lots and lots of catalogs. 88, 89, 90. Um, again, you can see stuff like the original Pluto mold in the original artist's proof. So these are wonderful at information. Again, I say it all the time, that it's just not available on the internet or really any place else than the original catalogs and magazines of the time. The problem is, so these are just lots more, lots more catalogs. They add up, they're super heavy. And then when you want to find them, they're in a box. They're at the bottom of the box. The box is heavy. Um, I do use these. I'll take these if I'm um, showing my original sham with the wheat ear. I'll find my original catalog and put it out with the horse and show. Here's Retruder sculpting it. Here's him with Grimalkin. Um, I like to keep these. But then what do you do with them? Um, probably these big dealer catalogs are super nice. Just putting them somewhere that it's easier to get a hold of them. Um, in some sort of order. These little dealer or these little consumer catalogs go through them and see if there's anything in them. Probably not as informative, but especially old color photocopies of the original 50s stuff. Super interesting. Um, the ones that have like the model horse collectors jamboree, all of these pieces of information, that information gets lost over the years. We forget it. Um, it doesn't get transferred. The old GeoCities and Angel Fire websites are down. MySpace is down. So much of the information that we used to rely on on the internet disappears when that website disappears or the host no longer um, goes, out of, goes out of business. We need to keep paper, but we need to keep it in an organized fashion. Keep it with the horses that they go with. Keep it someplace so that you can put your hands on it. Maybe even scan it into your computer so that you can have it and print it out when you need it and keep the original someplace that's um, out of the way because this stuff's heavy and it's hard to store and it's hard to keep filed. This is pretty much what my paper information looks like is just a box of stuff. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. I love paper, I love information, I love old ephemera, and so this was a really fun box for me. I hope you enjoyed, and join me next week. You never know what I'll find. Thank you.